Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff, and welcome to an old project made anew, <laughs> in a way. Uh, when I got monetized a couple of months ago, I realized, I found out, in fact, didn't realize, I found out, that uh, someone who had put music up on a free, common license, just use it however you want, music site, decided to start hitting people with copyright claims who actually used that music. Uh, and so my Spagnolo trestle table video got a copyright ding and apparently was uh, whoever's music that was was going to be making the money off of that video. And I couldn't figure out how to use YouTube's like uh, audio swap function where you could just drop out the infringing material and put something else in. So I just took the video down and I still had all the raw footage. So... I have re-edited it together, and I am presenting it to you now. So enjoy watching me flounder around uh, making my kitchen table. I've been using it for just about two years, and it it was really it was a turning point in uh, in my woodworking or my early woodworking career, where I, I figured out that this is actually something I might be able to do. So follow along. I uh, re-edited all of the footage together and I did a brand new voiceover for it and uh, there you go. Behold. <laughs> Hello again everyone. Welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. I think that's what I called it. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Anyway, today I'm going to again bite off a major project. I've got another uh, week of vacation. And last time I had a week of vacation and I embarked on a project, I bit off more than I could chew on my mahogany coffee table. This time I'm going to make a dining room table. And it's going to be based on Mark Spagnolo again and his uh, trestle table that he made. So I'm going to roughly follow his plans, maybe make a few tweaks. I'm going to fit it to fit my kitchen dining area. And... Uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do a walnut top and a walnut accent strip in the legs. And I'm going to use some Douglas fir actually for the, the main part of the body of the table. So stick around. Let's, it's the middle of the day. Why are there so many crickets? You guys hear that? It's like noon. Go to bed, crickets. Table time. Let's go. Okay, so um, I was going through the footage of this build and apparently back when I was recording this, I decided that if I made an, a mistake of some kind, I would just delete that clip and do it right. So unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the mistakes that I made throughout this process. But uh, if I remember one, I will definitely let you know. So this is the uh, the rough eight quarter Douglas fir that is going to become the legs and the stretcher uh, of the frame underneath the table. And I was working from a set of plans from Mark Spagnolo on this table. It was a trestle table he built on his channel, um, just sized to fit my uh, my space in my kitchen. So uh, I was lucky in that I didn't. Uh, have to design this myself because I would not have been able to do this otherwise. Uh, this is the accent strip for the middle of the leg. I had to glue two pieces of four quarter together to get a thick enough piece of walnut to go in between the eight quarter pieces of Douglas fir. You'll see in a minute how that works. Um, but it was fine because the, uh, the joint between those two boards is actually captured within where it goes. So we just get that all uh, ripped and set up and squared up and flushed up and etc etc and then we can get cutting the legs to length um, it's just still rough cuts just to get approximate working size blanks that I can deal with then I uh, pick the six inches that I like out of that board and the other one as well and uh, get rid of the rest of it because these were gonna get split into three inch pieces here you're watching me do that now so two three inch pieces and I wanted to get 
use a continuous grain so I just cut them out of one board and then the walnut strip goes in between them sits a little bit proud on the outside um, and the mortise for the uh, what do you call it what do you call it the thing in between the legs uh, stretcher is it a stretcher some kind of anyway uh, that goes through the mortise that's placed. See this little spacer block here? Uh, we glue the walnut pieces in with a spacer block so that that then becomes the space for the stretcher tenon to go through and get wedged. Uh, all will become clear shortly. And see how they're sticking out a little bit proud on that uh, outside there? And then it's just a design feature that Mark used that I liked, so I went with it too. And here we are, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. This might be the uh, the stretcher. What, I don't think that's actually what it's called in a trusted table. It's not a stretcher, is it? A little cross piece that stabilizes the whole thing? Uh, whatever. And I need another walnut strip to go in the middle of that because I decided to uh, sort of mimic the accent strip of the legs in the stretcher. Uh, which is not what it's called. Why is that, that bothering me that I can't remember what that's called in a trusted table? Uh, but whatever. So I made a walnut strip that is the width of the part that I want it to go into. And then, uh, see this is the... So basically it's going to mimic the outside strip feature on the legs, just in the cross piece. I don't know, I'm not going to call it a stretcher anymore. Uh, and then that can get glued in, and then we've got that blank ready to go as well. And uh, then by that point, the uh, glue is set on the leg pieces. I can get planing the side that the walnut is flush on can get flushed, and the side that it's not flush on can get sanded. Um, yeah, well, that's still the inside, but uh, sand both sides. I'm actually almost at finished sand stage here. I think I went up to like 180 at this point on them. And then, because basically I just need to get them cut to length, and put the taper on them and then make the cleats that they attach to to become actual legs that can attach to a table. So this is them getting cut to length. Now we're gonna freshen up the outside face with a card scraper badly um, just because that's not flush. And then some more final sanding there and rounding over the nice edges of the walnut bit. And when am I going to start building the cleats? Oh, there we go. We're going to make the mortises on the legs that go into the cleats using my uh, floating tenon strategy that I've used in a lot of things. Actually, this might have been my first one, though. Nope. The coffee table was the first one. Um, and then I could transfer the location of those mortises onto the leg. Nope. The, the uh, cleat. That's, a, that's the foot, I guess. Is it? the bottom of a leg would be a foot so there's like a foot cleat and then a top cleat that attaches to the table get those mortises transferred over do the same thing with the router uh, and then we're gonna have to make some tenon stock for it I think and I once again you've probably seen me use the quarter inch hobby oak from the uh, big box store that I'm gonna use again okay well we're gonna taper the legs or the feet cleats oh, terms uh, we're <laughs> tapering those things. Oh, this is the old crappy bandsaw. This is, uh, yeah, an old benchtop bandsaw. Look at this. It, that, that cut took a really long time, and it was terrible. Oh, and the old bench that is... <laughs> I'm flushing up that taper with the old crappy plane on a bench that rocks and wobbles in an old <laughs> vice. Uh, that's I like looking back at the old shop. It's fun. And then we tapered the leg parts. And I used the I made up a little jig to use the table saw to do this one because I did not enjoy tapering the band saw and then you, flushing it up with the plane. Uh, and then final sanding before assembly of all of the leg and things parts. And here's the tenon stock we're gonna make. So it's uh, rip them to the size of your tenons and then you put a little sort of notch 
in the one side so that if it is super super tight the glue has somewhere to go to get out instead of creating like a hydraulic pressure situation in there. And we round over the edges of it and get them cut into tenons and we'll get the whole leg assembly put together. Um, that was that was a good day when I got the leg assembly put together. I remember that because there wasn't any significant problems throughout the leg process, but oh, we're drilling the holes in the top cleat now to uh, that old that old screws go into the tabletop, and they have to be slotted so that the tabletop can expand and contract. So this is you do a big a big one so that you can of counterbore for the screw and then you can do a little slot with a smaller drill bit and then it can freely move and they get epoxied together I didn't show the epoxying together because glue ups are boring to watch um, but that's what the legs look like and now we can start pulling down the walnut for the top uh, walnut's pretty I had a hard time actually. I had uh, I'd been gathering these boards up sort of one or two at a time every time I went into the store, knowing that this was what they were for, and uh, then I had to pick through them and figure out which ones I liked and how which way they would go together and what order they would go in. And, um, then we could this is back before I knew the importance of jointing. Um, I did have my little six inch jointer, but I kind of assumed that because these were nice and big, I could just like sort of press them flat as they were getting clamped once the edges were joint jointed. So uh, they're a little bit wonky uh, bow wise, um, but I did manage to clamp them fairly flat and it just meant that the whole tabletop had to get sort of flattened down after the fact, which is not ideal, I now realize, but, <laughs> you know, you learn. So getting them cut to uh, approximate length, before we, uh, now that the edges are jointed, we can get them cut to, I don't remember how long this table was, it was smaller than Mark's, but bigger than the one that it was replacing. We wanted to replace a circular table with sort of an oblong square-ish table that was wider but not as deep um, so that we could get around it a little bit better in the space that it goes in. See here I'm using these calls um, to try and pull those things flat and it it worked-ish. Get the little clamping blocks there on the in between the joints. It it worked okay. It didn't involve a ton of flattening after. So this is their uh, little cross piece dealie that we got to start cutting some tenons on that then the tenons get mortises in them um, which was an interesting thing to do for the first time um, and I've still got that block somewhere but I put it aside for some reason because I thought I was going to do something with it so here is the dado stack and we just kind of make a little nibble um, and do a fit in the leg hole the, the mortise in the legs behind me there uh, just to make sure that it's it should be a little bit too big at first and then you can raise the blade just a tad until it fits nice and snug in there and then we can get hogging away the stuff I've got my lines marked uh, I probably if I knew now or knew then what I know now I would use a stop block to get those shoulders nice and square but I managed to get it in there and yeah here we go with the hand plane I basically had to spend I don't know a couple hours with this hand plane before I knew how to sharpen anything uh, flattening this top but it made me a better person <laughs> or something I don't know and then card scraper and then sander and oh yeah just watch when the finish goes on this thing it's beautiful Oh, the crappy old jigsaw. This, this cut, I was just uh, sort of putting a nice light curve around all four edges. And that cut took me like six minutes. And I replaced my band, so, or my uh, jigsaw shortly after that. Then we fare that curve with the random orbit sander as best we can. And that's basically what the tabletop looks like there. Right? That looks pretty nice, and it doesn't even have any finish on it. 
Uh, and then, oh god, the bandsaw. Cutting the curve in the uh, stretcher, I guess. Man, I, I'm gonna remember immediately after I do this voiceover what that thing is called. Uh, and then we tried to fair in that curve on the, uh, the old Triton spindle sander, but it's hard to fair a curve on a spindle sander, so I basically just did this for a long time until I got a nice fair curve. And then, see, here's the mortise going into the tenon that goes through the legs, and then that gets wedged. Um, yeah, so start by sort of getting the corners out and then hogging away the majority of the waste with forcing a bit. And then we can cut the little bit in between those out with jigsaw, grab the old jigsaw that got replaced like literally the next week, I think. <laughs> Very soon after. And then uh, we put a couple of little uh, pieces of plywood on there and the router bit with a like a flush trim rudder bit with a bearing and then I just uh, sand it up with a little sanding stick and yeah so this is how I had to make my wedges too I was using a four quarter and the, these wedges needed to be like two and three quarter inches wide or something so I basically I cut the wedges out of the four quarter and then I glued up three of them uh, times four and uh, then I could sand those up and get them all smooth and pretty. Final sanding on the legs before finish gets applied. And uh, I used, what did I use? There's a walnut colored something. I think it was walnut colored Danish oil that I used on the legs. Um, and wipe on poly on the top. Here we're breaking the, uh, the top edge with a round over. Um, I think I used like a small round over on the top and a big round over on the bottom. It's like a quarter inch and a half or an eighth inch and a half inch or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a walnut colored Danish oil that I thought would kind of uh, pop the grain a little bit in the Douglas fir and also add a little bit of depth of color to the walnut in the stripes. Which it did. I, I don't know, I guess. I, I don't have a frame of reference for what it would have like what a non-tinted Danish oil would have done. Uh, this is good stuff. I just, I'm just gonna shut up. Oh, yeah. That's what the top of my table looks like. And uh, then we can cut the wedges to size. We just wedge them in there, give them a little tap 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 a roo, and uh, measure the mark where we want to cut them, and cut them and finish them, and we're all done. That's it. That's the table. So there's the table. It's uh, it's like I said, it's been in my kitchen for a couple of years now. I'll put up a, a before and after of. Uh, what the table we were using and then the the after of the new table uh like i said it was a turning point in my woodworking where i actually it was maybe my second significant piece of furniture and uh and it turned out really really nicely and i thought you know what this might be something for you mr guy so i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching uh if you want to keep supporting what i do here on the channel you can uh watch the ads instead of skipping them or better yet you can head to uh, patreon.com slash wooden things and stuff i'll put a link in a pinned comment down below and you can toss me a couple of bucks a month to help me out and keep me going over here uh if you feel like it. if you don't i just appreciate you watching the videos once in a while you could give them a share and help them get out to a few more people but anyway for now signing off everybody stay safe Stay healthy, stay happy. Go make something in your shop. Is that a weird sign off? That was a weird sign off. I should do this again. I should do that sign, that whole outro again. But I'm not going to.